Uh, yeah, it's Henry Perry Smith. Uh, job title is farm slash hop manager, Brookhouse Farm. And we're in Brookhouse Farm, Avonbury, Bromyard. And it's the 31st of July 2017. Um, so can you just give me a little bit of um, a background about how you came to be here working with Will? Yeah, well, I grew up on a hop farm. Um, from the age of, I don't know, five, six. Um, did that for a while, didn't really like farming. Uh, fell into a couple of other jobs, went to university and realised I did like it. Um, had another job placement at a farm around here and didn't work out and Will offered me a job. And we've gone from there, really. So tell me a little bit about what, you're, what you and Will are doing here then. What... So essentially, it was just a kind of an arable farm. It's got a few apples, it's got I think 50 or 60 acres of apples. Uh, the idea was to come and to put in, like invest money in, and to put up new hop yards and start from scratch essentially, which not a lot of people are doing. Everyone seemed to rip all of the hops out, but the money's quite good in the hops. Yeah, so essentially taking a normal farm that was an arable farm with no hops and trying to plant enough hops and put up enough wire work to be commercially viable, really. Um, which started off with us buying a few posts <laughs> to plant in, I think we're, at f we're about 52, 53 acres now, which has all happened over 18 months. But we didn't have any kilns, any picking machine, any tractors that could really cope with it. We didn't, we literally it was just a clean slate. So starting from the very basics, if that makes sense. Kind of like building a house. And the idea is to, to get up to a good acreage so we can get some good contracts for the hops, make some money and bring some hops back into the UK. So tell me a bit about um, the last year, because I think it was like one acre last year and now it's 45 acres. I mean, just tell us what's been happening in that year then. Well, yeah, we started off, I think it was six acres originally. We planted one hop yard, but we could only pick roughly an acre of them. I think it was 10 or 12 rows. So now we carried on planting in the background, but you've got to wait, depending on when you plant the hops, you've got to wait a certain amount of time before you can pick them and then sell them. So in the background, while we were picking those, we were still building all of the other hop yards and looking after the hops at the same time. But what we did was planted all of the hops in one go essentially and built the wire work around it, which is quite a rush you're always chasing yourself if that makes sense so what a lot of people have said it's you know nobody sets up a new hop yard it's too sort of mm. it costs you know too intensive and too expensive and everything and it's only really old ones what what do people think of will's venture and what you're up to here it's hard to say i think people from the outside probably think he's mad just from a, a point where he has he hadn't farmed before and to a lot of people i don't know around here people that make quite a bit of money come and buy a farm and they don't do anything with it. Whereas Will's come with ideas and money and he's putting them into a farm and he's actually making the most of it as opposed to just taking a single farm payment and dodging taxes, if that makes sense. So he's actually working the farm. So I think initially people must have thought, and I did to start with when he offered me the job, I thought, that's a big ask. Because no one, I think, there's not a lot of people that plant, plant that amount of acreage. And, and even some of the smaller farms around here only have 40, 50 acres anyway. And to do all of that in 18 months was always going to be really hard and tight. But looking at it now, I think a lot, a lot of people, all you can do is respect him because he hasn't just come and sat on a farm and he's actually making the most of it. And we're doing a good job, I think. And we've got good hops, so... He's also bringing like new technologies to a an old farm. So we've got the irrigation systems and computer software in the tractor, which helps you spray the right amounts. And so he's brought a kind of a, a new different view from looking outside on farming as opposed to just farming like people have for years, which is working anyway. I think the soil quality we've got here is a lot better than it is in Kent or around the country for me I think here and Worcestershire is just the best soil type it holds its moisture 
the nutrients are good in it and the hops just love to, to grow in it. I don't know what it is, but fields where you see corn or wheat, whatever you have, might not grow well. Hops always seem to, to do well in it. So going back a bit then, tell me a bit about your childhood and growing up on your... Can you just tell us a bit about your family farm and the growing up and the fact that you didn't really like it and then you did like it and can you tell us a bit more about that yeah. and what it was like growing up on a hop farm, your kind of memories of it really? Well, I, I was born near Birmingham just from the very start. My mum and dad moved to the country. They got divorced. My mum met her new partner, which is my stepdad now, who was a hop farmer, um, and just grew up on there. And to start with, I wasn't a big fan of it. I mean, everyone loves jumping out of trees and stuff, don't they? But it was just a bit of a culture shock, even though I was so small and used to different things. None of my friends were around me, things like that. But you, I think hindsight's a wonderful thing and that you don't realise how beautiful it is. Um, yeah, so I went off, did my own thing. Went to college, university, had a few jobs. Sat in an office, getting paid a lot of money and just... I was that annoying bloke who was always tapping a pen or <laughs> bashing his feet. And then just came back out and thought, I want to do it. And for some reason, all of that knowledge that you've picked up, all that passion, all the times that when I was, I don't know, eight, nine, and you were jumping off the tractor trailers and jumping in the hops that had been freshly dried and, and walk around with my dad walking the hops, you would pick it up and it's kind of ingrained in you as much as you might not like it. I don't know, I suppose it's, it works the same way, doesn't it, as someone that starts in the city and moves to the country and realises they don't like it. So tell me what it is about hops and everybody seems to go a bit misty-eyed and sort of there's something about hops that seems to get to people. What, what is that? It's, you can't explain it. That sounds like a really poor answer to a question, but the smell, the feel, that it's not like any crop that you could grow. And I know a lot of people that grow other crops would probably say the same. But from when they're little plants and, and you nurture them, I suppose it's a bit like having kids. You nurture them, you make sure they're fed, they're healthy, you keep any pests and disease away. And when they get to this point, when they go into burr and go into cone and you can see the hops, and you understand all of that hard work pays off to be something beautiful. I don't know. It sounds like it's a really vague way of answering. But hot picking is like the most stressful time I've ever had in my life. It's, it's the only thing that I could compare to, I don't know, giving birth. You, see, you hear women say they give birth, oh, it's the worst time in my life. But then you want another kid or the child that comes from that is is your child it's beautiful isn't it and it's one of those it's the worst time period and it's quite labor intensive so you can be out in the field and you're wet through to your underwear and it's just it's horrific but when you see the hops in the field and you see them being picked you see them going through the machine every process in the kiln and then you package them into a little bale i don't know you can't you can't explain it you need to do it to to understand if that makes sense and that, that smell is the smell of hops in a kiln. You could be up there in a vest and shorts and it's raining outside and you're sweating, but that smell and the touch of them, when you have to, you have to dry them by hand and you can feel them. It's like anything that you put a lot of work into. They're like kids. When you get to 18 and you see they got their first job, you think, I've done my job right. You haven't got an 18 year old kid. No, I don't have any children, thank God. <laughs> Our sticks are growing up. So. Our sticks are hops. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Okay. Your times when you have done hop picking, you said you worked at Claston Farm and then at, um, somewhere else. Where was the other place you worked? Yeah, I worked with James Hawkins, Claston Farm. Didn't actually do a hop picking there. It was kind of like an, an intermediate job. It was only for six or seven months. And I went on to manage the farm, which is the farm Bosbury. Uh, which is Sarah Hawkins's farm. I did my first hot picking on my own, um, which was really stressful. Um, taught me a lot anyway, a lot that I need to know for this hot picking. Um, but that was quite a big, I think that's about 170 acres. So that's quite a, a big one. It was quite scary going from having a job on my farm when I was 16, working with my dad to going and doing it on my own. Um, but everything worked out all right. We got the hops in. <laughs> But yeah, so I worked there for a bit, 
and then just left. It wasn't the right job for me, right place. Um, and Will offered me the job here. So were you always looking when you came back, was it you knew it was Hawks you wanted to work with? Yeah, I've, I've never had any passion for, I mean, I've, I've done the, I've picked the potatoes, I've, I've done all the generic young farmer kind of jobs, if that makes sense. And it's all, it was all just a job. Whereas I don't know what it is, but something draws me back to hops. I don't know whether it's been installed in me growing up. It's quite a niche thing as well. There's only 40 or so growers in the UK. And if you look at the age of growers, to manage a farm, I'm probably one of the youngest. And to own a farm, Will's probably isn't far off being the youngest. So it tends to be farms that have been handed down from generation to generation and they've just kept their little plot of hops. Not taking away from any hop farmers what they do, but... You ready? Yeah. Um, so what's, um, what's kind of happening now in the run-up to the harvest and when, the, when your workers coming in and who's coming and how's all that kind of going to run and how long's the harvest going to be? Just give us a bit of a flavour of what's, what's coming up, really. So right now, uh, everything's been done, really, in terms of getting them to where they need to be. It's just continuing to spray... To keep the areas around the hop yard tidy, so mow and things like that, keep all of the bugs and the pests out of the hops. It's quite a crucial part because they go from being in burr to being in cone, which is essentially like blossom on an apple tree before the apple comes out. So chemical-wise and spray-wise, it's most important for us to keep them as clean as we can, trying not to spray, obviously, too much rubbish on them. Um, and we get them in the shed ready. <laughs> so we had no picking shed no kill so that's all in the process of being done at the same point so all of our staff well we have quite a lot of staff now have been brought in to help do the shed do the kilns do the baling machine we've got tractors that need to be fitted with certain things hops still need to be sprayed because the hops will keep growing um, and then it calms down a bit roughly i don't know 31st of august maybe so the bank holiday in august is generally start date for all the hop pickers depends on what varieties you've got so for us middle of august we'll get we have eastern european labor now so we get a load of polish guys this year they'll stay in caravans we'll get them used to the their surroundings kind of thing teach them a little bit about the hops try and train them slowly so they're not just lumped with a job they've never done first day uh bank holiday august is like go and from then on if you have to work seven days a week, 16 hours a day, then you do it. You kind of just go by the clock of the crop as opposed to the, I don't know, the, the weekly rotor, if that makes sense. So we might have some breaks in between, but generally we just pick the variety that needs to be picked. Could move straight on or... And then end of September, probably. It depends how well we do. I'm hoping it'll be three, three and a half weeks. It depends on how well you do. End of September, everyone goes home. And have a few pints. And do you, do you, what do you think, what's your favourite time of the year? Is it the picking season or is it too hectic? <laughs> yeah, it's one of those that hot picking is, if you're working in it, it's the worst time of your life, but it's the best time of your life. Like I said before, it's, it's the most stressful period that you're going to have, but knowing that you start on, I'll say, hop yard one, we've got a hop yard called hop yard one, if you start on that and you finish it in four days... Well, that's that field gone. You've done that. It's all packaged up. It's nice and done. So for me, probably hot picking, I'd say. Because spraying's quite boring. You just sit in a tractor spraying for days and days. And in the winter, it's quite slow and the weather's rubbish and you're kind of just recovering and maintaining and, and getting things ready for the next year. So the most exciting time would be hot picking. And is there, is there, do you think there's much of a com community sort of around it? Because it used to be a big thing, obviously, because there's big crews or something, mm. people would kind of camp and cook and all those. Is there still that goes on, do you think? I, th I think so. Uh, growing up, we used to get a lot of stuff from, like, the Dudley area. And I remember when I was a kid, they used to all come down. They'd bring their kids with them because it was summer holidays and they'd stay down here in caravans and they'd all go back afterwards. I don't think so much that happens anymore because everything has to be legit and things have to go on the books and stuff like that. Um, but definitely towards 
my dad's farm. I mean, we've only been going a little while here, but he sort of has the same families from Poland that come back and they work and then they'll go back home and then they'll come on school holidays and they'll do a bit more work. So that's got kind of a community feel to it. I'm hoping we can get something like that here as well. Because it's nice to have that extended family kind of vibe and it just means a better team as well. So the same people come back again and again, but this year we're starting fresh. So in terms of the community, they do a hot pocket race in Bromyard and stuff like that. So I think as a whole, the community appreciates hot farming. Mostly around Herefordshire and Worcestershire anyway. So what about, um, I said only had two more questions, didn't I? You keep answering them too well. <laughs> so what do you, in so that's just quite interesting about labour and stuff, do you see any challenges with the whole Brexit thing about getting labour? Is that a kind of worry or are you just Not, going with it? Yeah, just go with it. I, got, I don't understand politics enough to, under, to make a, like a, a comment on whether it'll change it. It probably will a little bit. But for us, I wouldn't change having Eastern European Labour just because a lot of people slate them is in them as in a general stereotypical like you're taking our jobs and stuff but I've never known workers work as hard as they do and it's one of those if you treat people with respect you get respect and if you give them nice accommodation and, and you become friends with them as well because they're just the same as us aren't they? <laughs> essentially <laughs> You don't think, um, sort of, um, politically, though, people from Eastern Europe, Europe will think they're not welcome or, you know, because there's a lot in the media about that. I mean, I, it, from talking to people, it doesn't feel like people do feel that, but you see stuff in the media, don't you? You just wonder whether it's... It's hard to judge, isn't it? Because I think certain areas, especially around here, generically, the old traditional farming type are quite against anyone coming in from a different country and stuff like that which doesn't make sense to me. Because uh, like, like the guys at the shed, I mean, we've got three or four Polish guys, maybe five at the shed now, and we all have a laugh, we go to the pub. I don't think that will affect our circumstance, but I think it might in general for people, if that makes sense. Because for us, it's like if you guys came and worked for us, it's you're part of our team now, and we can do it without them. But I can see why it would. I can see why it would intimidate people and and make them feel like they're not welcome. Because the vote went that one way, didn't it? So if you are gonna do it democratically, we have all voted that way, even though some people didn't. I don't know how to phrase this as a question, but you know, you said, you said tell us a bit about people's understanding of hops and how you think that might have changed. Because you said a lot of people say, what's a hop? They don't even really no. know. But do you think that's changing? Can you tell me that little story? <laughs> Well, yeah, I've, I've come across people in the past and they say, I don't know, you meet them at functions and stuff. What do you do for a living? I'm a hop farmer. Well, what's a hop? And uh, quite often you'll see them holding a pint of beer <laughs> and you'll be like, well, you drink beer, don't you? So you know what a hop is. But I don't think, it's quite a niche. It's not, I don't know, it's not very well broadcasted. I don't think hops are made that big of a deal. It's like, like they are in Germany in the Hallertau Valley. Hops they've got statues of hops and, and things like that. And it's a real like intense part of the community. Whereas I think if you mentioned Herefordshire to someone in farming, they'd think about cows, potatoes, you know, all the generic things. I think more people are aware around here because obviously all you've got to do is drive through the Froome Valley and you see hop yards everywhere. So if you, yeah, you've got to be living under a, a brick if you don't know what a hop is. But the wider, especially the younger generation, they have no idea. I say no idea, that's it's quite a broad, isn't it? But a lot of people I've spoken to wouldn't know what a hop is. And then you explain and they're like, oh yeah, hop, beer. So how would you grow them? And then you can go in and explain it. And most of the time they're like fascinated by it. The same as you, if you're drinking a pint of cider and you don't know what a cider apple is. But a, a lot of people don't, that I've come across, not everyone, but a lot of people, especially the younger generation, don't really understand what a hop is. Or what it entails and a lot of people say funny enough i bet you enjoy sitting on your big tractors which i would love to just sit on a big tractor all day but hot picking is quite labor intensive mm -hmm. ah. don't turn it off okay <laughs> <laughs> one more so what's the what do you see as you're you're quite young what yeah. do you see where will you what do you see as the future of hops 
of hops for or you, for me? Or for you and, and hops or, or both? <laughs> for hops, I'm hoping that people will get man enough to just keep planting hops. Because we're at the stage now where we can grow varieties that America can't grow and they can't get the same taste from. So for me, I think it's like any industry. It'd be nicer to grow traditional English hops in England and to be able to distribute them throughout the world, regardless of who can put up more acreage or who's got more money. So I'd like to see more people putting hops in. And for me, I'd love to see Will just go mad and just keep planting hops. Like I said, I thought he was a bit mad to start with, but we've worked together for, I think, it's nearly two years now from nothing. And I'd, I'd love to see him just just keep planting and I'll keep running with him and we'll just keep expanding. I don't know how far we can go, but for me, I'd love, I'd love to... I, I see this as a job that I'll, I'll be doing when I'm 50 and someone asks me the question, the same question you've asked me. Well, how did you get into hops? And I'll be like, actually, it's a nice video you should watch. You're collecting these kind of stories and, um, you know, looking at the heritage of hops and sort of the future. Why is there a... What, do you think it's an important or valuable thing to do? Or do you think why are they bothering to do that? It's always nice to, to get across someone's industry and, and to find out the history behind it and, and not so much just knowledge about a hop it's nice to understand that how it all started and because there is a bit of a culture behind it so for me i don't know I'm, I, I like learning new things and stuff i think it's it's nicer than just someone saying this is a hop it goes into beer it's one of the processes it's nice to understand the effort and the time and the love that's put into hops and how hard it is to produce a single hop which can can go into that pint of beer which everyone looks for so I think it's I think it's nice. I think it's good. And how has it been being interviewed today? Are you traumatised? Yeah, <laughs> horrific. <laughs> I don't think I'd do it again. <laughs> no, it's been great. Yeah, it's been good. Anything in particular has it made you kind of? Has it you know? Anything, has yeah. It made well, you think about anything that you haven't thought about before, or kind of? You might have had a fairly yeah, more yeah. chance. <laughs> if he was going to interview. Yeah. No, to be fair, I, I might go into acting. Oh really? Yeah. I, th I can see myself, interview. yeah, being a George Clooney-esque. <laughs> no. You've changed your <laughs> Ch Changed my career. I've got a love for the camera. Yeah, now. no. I'm quite, I'm quite used to being put on the spot, so it's okay. fine. Okay. Great. Brilliant. Okay.